A change of heart changes everything. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. August 18th, 2022. Thursday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. I will pour clean water on you, and wash away all your sins. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Alleluia, Alleluia, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings by Bob. 
Today we are faced with a question, are we willing to have a change of heart in order to enter into the reign of God? In the passage from Ezekiel, God promises to give a new heart to the people whom God has chosen and who respond to God's calling. This new heart is a living heart, rather than a cold, stony heart. The psalm reinforces this theme of a new heart and reminds us that what God wants from us is not the offering of sacrifices, but a humble, contrite heart, a desire to walk in the ways of God. Today's Gospel uses the analogy of a king inviting people to come the wedding of the prince. Some people refuse the invitation with all sorts of excuses. The king then extends the invitation to anyone who would listen, provided that they are willing to change into something presentable. Some fail to change and face the consequences. God, speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, inspires hope in a people who are in exile. God promises a time of renewal and restoration. It will be marked by the Lord's placing a loving, caring, obedient heart in the those who respond to God. This heart will not be the rigid, uncaring heart like those who broke God's covenant in the past. It will be a warm, living heart which symbolizes a life energized and empowered by the Lord. With this heart, which comes from a personal relationship with God, the people will experience renewed wisdom and strength. Psalm 51 is the often quoted penitential psalm. The last verses today also speak of God searching for those who have a humble, contrite heart. God is not looking for people who just mouth pious words or perform rituals without a loving heart. God wants people who are willing to give their hearts to God and change their lifestyles to reflect a renewed relationship with the Lord. This is the change of heart that God desires. In the Gospel, Jesus' parable of the king who throws a wedding party for his son shows us God's desire for people to rejoice in the goodness and kindness of God. Yet some people not only refuse to change their plans in order to share in the joy of the celebration, but some go so far as to persecute and kill the heralds of good news. This causes the ruler to open up the celebration to any who would accept the invitation. One of the requirements for entry into the feast is the willingness to change into the proper attire, which, presumably, is provided by the host. Failure to put on the required apparel results in expulsion. As I reflect on the readings today, I am struck by God's desire for us to be part of the divine plan and by people's failure to accept the invitation which the Lord Jesus presents. God only wants for us to be totally joyful. And the fullness of joy comes from a complete relationship with the Lord Jesus and His loving Abba Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. This is what is symbolized by the warm, caring heart. If people are willing to change their stony, cold hearts for the heart which God provides, not only will they sense the life of God being pumped through their bodies, but also they will live lives which are filled with joy even in the midst of tragedy. It is important to realize that to the Hebrew people, the heart is the center of thinking and decision. Thus having a warm, caring heart means be willing to receive God's wisdom and then make the decision to accept God's invitation and do what is necessary to be part of the celebration in God's reign. The problem for many people in accepting God's invitation is that it means people have to be willing to change their hearts, make a decision to accept God's invitation. Yet for some people who have their hearts set on other things, this is almost impossible. They have hardened their hearts to God's way and are not willing to change, even if it might lead to a more joyful life. 
Some make all sorts of excuses about why they cannot or will not change. Others go so far as to do away with the messengers of God's good news. Others accept God's invitation, at least partially, but they do not want to have to change completely, even if God provides the festive garment to wear, the means of changing one's life to a life of joy. I know there are things in my life that I am reluctant to change. I don't want to give up some of my sinful habits in order to fully turn my heart to God. I am willing to accept God's invitation, but I often want to say, yes, but. I become hard-hearted in one or two aspects of my life. I sometimes even choose to live a miserable life on purpose so I can act the a martyr, or make others miserable, too. The Lord Jesus keeps saying, trust me. Put on a humble, contrite heart. Accept my invitation. Choose to do what I ask. God wants the best for us. But we must be willing to let go of our hard-hearted ways. Let us make the decision to fully accept the Lord Jesus' invitation and enjoy the rich feast which God has prepared for us. The personal question or action for today, what excuses do I make for not fully accepting God's invitation? When I do accept the Lord Jesus' gifts, do I hold back from completely clothing myself with all which God provides? How can I more fully respond to God's calling? How can I help and encourage others to hear and to accept what the Lord Jesus is offering to them and choose to follow Him? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, the God who is always inviting. Through your goodness, you present an offer which we should not refuse. Yet, we become so attached to our ways that we find it hard to let go of those things which are preventing our hearts from turning totally to you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, soften our hearts and help us to feel your warmth and life-giving presence being pumped through our whole being. May we be renewed and enlivened so we will make the choice to change into the festive attire which you have for us and enjoy the feast which you provide in your reign. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son, for he is the reason for the joyful feast you are throwing, he is our Master and Teacher, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa